welcome to it. Today we are trying out Final Cut Pro on the iPad. I'm so excited. I feel like I always thought this would be such a fun idea. Like a few years ago when I first started my channel, I thought it would be awesome if Final Cut Pro was available on the iPad and it just wasn't, but now it is. And I'm so excited to try it out because this is gonna be life changing. Maybe, we will see. I think it'll be great to just be able to edit on the go. A smaller workspace than having my whole laptop or my whole iMac, so I'm excited. So I think we're actually gonna start editing with the footage that we have so far for this video, so I'm excited to see how that'll work out. You guys will literally watch me edit this intro that I just filmed. I have heard that you have to kind of like reteach yourself how to edit when you're doing like touch editing instead of with like a cursor and keyboard, so it's gonna be interesting to learn. I do a lot of like touch editing with my phone on like apps for editing TikToks and stuff, so I'm wondering if it's gonna be kind of similar but it'll be interesting to see everything that transfers over from like the shortcuts and everything that I use on my laptop. I do believe you have to have a certain type of iPad to be able to get this, so I had to dig out my old iPad Pro so I could work it and run it on this. I'll put the list of the compatibility iPads right here for you. I was nervous that it wasn't even gonna work for me when I first saw it not letting me download, but it was just because my iPad was updated, so if that's your case, make sure you update your iPad as well. But yeah, without a further ado, let's get on right into this. <laughs> So you do need to think about how you're going to import your footage that you're working with if you're filming off a camera. So I have this adapter with the SD card slot for USB-C that I'm going to plug into my iPad and upload the footage from there. Okay, so I have all my files imported here, and we're going to start just doing the intro. So it looks like we can select what parts we want here, but I'm actually going to put it into the timeline and work on it because I want to split it up a little bit. Okay, now how do I cut? Ah, there we go. There's the cut buttons. <laughs> this is so funny having to relearn all this. I almost wonder, so I have a trackpad down here on my magic keyboard. <gasps> oh, that's a game changer. Don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing, but I'm just, I'm just doing this down here. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I wonder if I can cut this thing. No, all right. It's very helpful having this keyboard, I will say, right off the bat. drag it close to. Okay, it definitely is a little bit more time consuming than it is on my laptop, but that's obviously I feel like just because I haven't learned how to be quick yet. And I have these big long nails on. <laughs> Does not my case. Okay, so if you don't have a keyboard, obviously the delete button's right there. It's really nice that it's all down here, so you can just do it all with this side of your hand and your thumb, which is kind of nice. I do want to play around with the the um this. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. The handwritten titles. Oops. <sighs> okay. So I have my Apple Pencil. I'm gonna connect. Okay, so it's charged. Oh my gosh, it's zero percent, of course. Well, we'll see if she'll work. So I have this brush pen or this highlighter. I might do that with that and color the white. I'm gonna do it all the way. Maybe change the thickness. It would be cool eventually if they can change up the different brushes that you can use, kind of like in Procreate, but this will do for now. So it's gonna be a live drawing of what I write, so.
don't forget to update your iPad. I didn't even get to the end of the words. It's definitely a lot of trial and error. And I want to draw some fun things. No, not on that one. Different. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that as it moves. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, well this is so much fun. I'm having a great time. Even though it's taking forever. And that's just the intro. I haven't even edited the part we're literally filming right now. Okay. I wonder how you put in like a normal text. Um, let's see. It's gotta be over here. Aha! Titles. So over here we can see all of our effects. And our transitions, which is cool. Our titles. Our backgrounds. Ooh, we have some fun ones, some new ones. Okay, cool. We can even add in objects, what the heck? Maybe? Okay, well, it doesn't want me to click on it, so. Oh, maybe not. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> so the keyboard commands don't work like they do on my laptop. Like, normally I push T for a title, but that doesn't work, at least not yet. And, of course, this also doesn't work. It's not letting me tap it. It was, but now it's not, so whatever. What's this mean? <gasps> oh, this is how you scrub. Oh my gosh, okay, that's fun. That's also another thing that's nice that it's right in this corner so that you can easily navigate. I'm so excited to like actually get much better at doing this. <laughs> I am obsessed with the live drawings though. Like how fun is that? So far, first impressions, I am obsessed. I think it's gonna be so much fun once I actually get good at it. Obviously nobody's go to something right away it takes some practice and some like learning especially when there's a learning curve like this so I'm very excited just to keep messing around and seeing what I can do I will finish editing the rest of this video um, but I'm actually going to the airport today so this is actually great because I will be able to have my iPad with me and edit it like in the airport so I'll take some footage and some clips of me doing that so let's go to the airport and see how this does on the go Okay everyone, I have edited up to 9 minutes and 24 seconds now on this vlog. I have traveled with the iPad and edited on a plane, at the airport, at home, and I feel like I can give a review now with some extra things for you guys to learn and then some questions that I have. So here are all of my final thoughts. Um, I'll just go through a list. I was writing them down in a notes on my iPad as well as I was going through and editing. So I do wish that it worked more seamlessly with the Magic Keyboard or any Bluetooth keyboard. Like on my MacBook, I can click B to bring up the blade tool to cut or I can use T to put in the title, but I can't do that on this, at least not yet, which maybe they'll add that in there, I don't know. But obviously for those who don't have any sort of keyboard, you can totally still edit on the iPad. It has all the functions to scrub and add in titles and everything, so it's seriously like, you do not need the keyboard if that's what you're worried about. I just like that it's holding it up for me. The effects are limited, so there's a few effects that I use on Final Cut Pro on my MacBook, and they don't have them on the tab for the iPad. Number three, I have to download my audio library onto my iPad or figure out a way to get my audio 
that I use to edit onto my iPad, which I didn't really think about. A super big problem that I can see already is that you can't work from an external hard drive with the iPad. So normally whenever I edit, I plug in my external hard drive that's like four terabytes of storage and I put my libraries and all my clips and stuff onto that so that it's not taking up space on my actual MacBook because that would fill up with like two videos. So uh, this thing, it's already saying that it is 7.79 gigabytes of footage and content. So that's nerve wracking because my iPad is 128 gigabytes of storage. So I mean, obviously we could get a few videos done and edited with this thing, but over time there's got to be some way to store all those things or you're going to have to start deleting things. Another thing that would be cool if you could work from an external hard drive is that you could probably like save the library onto the hard drive and then I wonder if then someday we would be able to plug the hard drive into our MacBooks and open it up on Final Cut Pro in on our MacBooks so that you could work seamlessly between your iPad or your MacBook. That would be really nice if that worked possible, but just not yet. I feel like it's obviously just came out, so we'll see if Apple makes any adjustment. Another thing is there is no stabilization button or settings on this version of Final Cut Pro for the iPad. I use that a lot on my clips whenever I'm filming on my MacBook to make things look smoother, like not so shaky, so there's not that on here. I do really like the halfway cut buttons that you can do when you are about to cut. There's like three options down there. There's one where you cut in the middle or you can cut and it'll delete the left half or you can cut and it'll delete the right half up to it. That makes things so much faster with editing instead of having to cut it and then click on the clip and delete it. It does it all in one swoop, so I really like that. There are cool dynamic backgrounds that you can use to have as a background for like text titles, so I thought that was really cool because they move in the background and they're really fun. It would be nice to be able to customize them myself to change the colors or something to fit more of my brand, but maybe someday. I do feel like whenever I go to edit on my MacBook now, I'm going to be sitting there tapping my screen trying to touch it when I can. Another thing is I can't figure out how to remove audio, so I've just been muting the clips all the way. And then I also can't figure out how to put in a voiceover. So those are just things that either I can't figure out or they don't exist yet and that's why I can't figure it out. So if anyone has any tips or knows how, I would love any help. But honestly, I feel like this is a great starting point for anybody who really wants to try out Final Cut Pro on their MacBook but don't want to pay the $300. Like this is only $5 a month or 50-ish a year, don't quote me on that. And I do like it because it feels much more advanced than iMovie and you can add in all these different types of titles and different types of things and get a use for the interface of Final Cut Pro and then you could decide if it's worth upgrading to the MacBook version. But yeah, I really like it. I'm excited to get to using it more for just any projects whenever I'm on the go. It was very easy to transport this thing and not have to carry around all of my hard drive stuff. So that was nice not having to carry that around but in the end obviously we're gonna need more space so yeah and of course I'm obsessed with the handwritten titles um, that's just so exciting I am so happy you have to skip out on the five billion steps that I used to have to take if I wanted to do that through procreate so I'm excited but again very interested to see if they will allow us to have a bunch of different types of brushes and things like procreate does that would be very nice if you have any other comments or questions leave those below and I'll try to help you out and answer those but I think that that is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.